Guys, today I will be showing you a compilation video of all of my spring and Easter decor videos for the season. So we're going to jump right in. So guys, I saw this cute wreath in the Dollar Tree. It actually had a little bit of the chicken wire in the space of the head and body. I removed that. That's what it would look like basically. And it was in a $5 aisle, but guys, it's worth it. It has a really nice substantial size to it. And it's perfect to create your own wreath. And I also picked up some of this Pip Garland. It's the really pretty light green and white for the spring and summer. And I absolutely love it. And I'm just going to be separating them out. I picked up three for my wreath if you want to duplicate this just for um, just letting you know. And I wanted to show a lot of the actual grapevine and have that coming through. So as you can see, I'm placing it sort of in the middle just to break up the color. I'm going to be adding on some florals later. But I didn't want large florals and I really wanted to just really show and accent the beauty of the pretty grapevine. It's just so cute. And I'm just securing that in place with a little hot glue. So guys, I'm going to be adding on this garland. It's really pretty with different flowers. And I'm going to be adding this on to the outside so a lot of the actual um, grapevine wreath will show. And this will be so pretty as a combination with the Pip Berry garland that I previously added on. going to be adding on some lamb's ears to embellish it a little bit more and also some of that ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to make a bow out of it to really make it like bright and festive for the Easter holiday and for spring and I'm going to be adding this to my little coffee bar area like right between that and my fridge. I think this turned out so stinking cute. I love the bright colors, but I also love the way this wreath was made from Dollar Tree items and it's absolutely gorgeous. So guys, I really like the way this one looks. I had it up since like right around <laughs> Valentine's Day. That's how much I love it. So I hope you guys like this one too. And now for my next one, I'm going to be doing some artisan candles with some pressed florals and I'll show you how we do this now. Some pressed flowers from any craft store. I actually ordered mine online on Amazon so I can definitely leave the link in the description bar below because for some reason they were sold out everywhere I guess everyone is using them for their resin projects and doing all of those resin things for the spring and Easter and they also come with this tweezer for convenience so guys they'll have everything that you need and to pull out some that I'll be using on my candles if you don't have regular white taper candles or candles in the house you could pick some up from the Dollar Tree to for a um, dollar twenty-five. You're also going to need some tea lights, and last but not least, a little brush that is very thin and very soft. These candles are Dollar Tree candles, guys, but I also have other candles because I will be giving these out as gifts. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Now you can pick out any piece you want. This is so simple and easy, but you do have to wait for your tea candle for the wax on the tea candle to melt down. So just give it about three minutes. Please make sure that you don't allow children to do this. This is for an adult craft. And you're just going to dip your little paintbrush into the wax that's melted. Make sure it's just getting on the tip. You don't want the brush to get too saturated with wax. And then you're just going to go ahead and dab a little on please don't use a lot. If you use a lot, your brush will get a lot of wax on it. Don't worry, it will melt once you stick it back in to the wax, but you really want to use as little as possible. You don't want it to be too much because it will get blotchy and you want it to have a really pretty aesthetic to it, not too thick and heavy. 
This is all you need. And I'm giving you a close up so that way you have an idea. And what I like to do is take my finger while it's still warm in the warmth of my hand and just gently rub it and that smooths it out and gives it a really pretty finished look. It doesn't look too hazy and cloudy. And as you can see, my brush is still clean. I'm going in with the very tip of it into my little candle. Remember, to use something that small, make sure that you're protecting your surface and you can easily hold it in place. And I'm sort of going under it slightly and then pressing down. Once your wax starts to get a little bit opaque, you know it's cooling down, it's time to dip it back in to your melted wax. Once again, I like to use tea candles. I've seen people do these with large candles. Do not allow children to do this by themselves. I know I do a lot of crafting for families. This one, you definitely need the adults or some older children with it. And when you do burn these candles, if you do, most people just use them for how pretty they are. Make sure that you're, you're burning them and that you're watching them. You're not just leaving them because of the botanicals could sometimes flare when you're burning them. But as you can see, when I'm placing it down just now, you saw me gently rubbing my finger across it. I'm going to show you another one, just that way you can get the technique down. As you can see, it's very, very little wax, and then I'm smoothing it out right away. Warming up my tip of my brush, adding a little bit to under it, and then right, right away, just going over it gently. And I'm just repeating that process and smoothing it out with my finger. And this is how you get the neatest, most beautiful. It looks like you bought it from the store if you do it this way. If you just keep dipping it and adding more to it, it will start to get really cloudy and hazy. And you really want it to look very clear and not so opaque. So guys, I gotta say, I absolutely love the way these turned out. These would even be perfect for a gift idea. And um, if you're into selling your crafts, perhaps adding these to a candle box that has that window pane in it where you can see through it, or even wrapping it in some jute or raffi, it would just be so nice as even a present or like I said, selling them. So I absolutely love how beautiful and vibrant and gorgeous these really are. They're so pretty and I can just use these for different seasons with other types of florals that are dried and I think it turned out amazing. So for my next DIY guys, first I have these candle holders. I'm going to be painting these out in white and then going back and distressing them for my egg decor. And we're going to be starting with some decoupage, which I love. So guys, I actually removed the ribbon off of these. I got these from Hobby Lobby. You can get them on sale. And guys, they are the perfect size for doing these types of projects. I printed out the cutest little Easter bunny. I love the colors with the green in the back. And I'm just going to sort of cut it into like a sort of semi-circle. Um, oval circle rather <laughs> and I'm going to add some decoupage to the back of it and I will be adding it also some of that to the egg and then adding it on it's very close in color to the egg but sort of different I wanted to have sort of a whimsical look so how beautiful the decoupage looks with the eggs it, it, it actually gives the egg a nice finished look and here I have the cutest ribbon from the Dollar Tree I loved those pastel spring colors with that gingham sort of check and it's perfect and all I'm going to be doing is hot gluing this to my egg and sort of framing it out where you see the picture of the little bunny with her Easter bonnet on. I think she is so adorable and I'm just going to be repeating that process so that way even if you see the back of the egg it will still be decorated and so pretty and just really making it look very finished and that's what I'm going for. Now I'm going to pull out my holder and I'm going to be adding in just a little bit of greenery. 
and bringing out the colors in that picture of the little Easter Bunny with that green background. Just adding this in will definitely give this a finished look and I absolutely love the way this one turned out. So guys, I'm going to be going in with a little bit of flowers, something light, not too much, just a little bit will be perfect as a base for my egg. And then I'm going to go back and I will be adding on a bow in the same gingham check that you saw. And I'm also going to be adding back the ribbon that I pulled off and you see it's a perfect match. And just to put my egg in place, I added a generous amount of the hot glue and it's staying perfectly, adding a dab for my bow. And guys, this turned out so whimsical, so adorable. I absolutely love the way this looks. It has this sort of whimsical vintage feel to it and I think it's just so adorable. My next one, I'm using this egg. I am not going to touch it. I like that pastel pink hue. I also printed out some more bunnies. This one is sitting down, it's cute, but this one looks a little bit more stately, so I will be using him. The coloring with the way these bunnies look, I absolutely love, and I just printed these off of my computer, guys, free printables. <laughs> and as you can see, it sort of matches. I like the color. I like that sort of pastel look. I'm going to be doing the same process with putting or adding decoupage to my egg and then going ahead and getting Mr. Bunny all decoupage down and I'm going to let him dry down. I gave this two coats also. I don't think you need more than that. I've also gone back and distressed my candle holder that I will be using for a base for this also. But I'm going in with a pastel pink ribbon this time. It is so gorgeous. It's a plush velvet ribbon. It's very pretty. It has that pink pastel hue, but it's slightly different and it gives it a slight contrast, but it's sort of very much the same with the same tone. I think it's perfect for this speckled egg and the tone and color of Mr. Bunny. I think it is adorable. I'm going to say do just the same process as before, adding it on with hot glue and framing it out and then going around the rest of the egg with that same beautiful plush velvet ribbon. I think it's so pretty in those pastel pink hues. Now to give this the same look that I had previously, if you wanted to use these as a pair, um, with decor, I'm adding in some greenery. I will just be adding in a bit more. I wanted this one to be a little bit more larger. That's why I'm using a different height for the candle holder, so that way they'll have different heights. It's always fun when you're decorating with vignettes and such. And I love the florals that I'm adding, just a little bit more flowers, little buds of roses and just a little bit more greenery and flowers and it is just going to make it even more whimsical and more pretty and just adorable with this bunny. Now you can go in with any egg of your choice. I just wanted this look, but you can do this with any look, not even a decoupage, but just paint it or maybe just go in with ribbon and it would be just as adorable. So guys, now I'm going to be adding my egg on with a generous amount of hot glue again and now I'm going to be adding back in my bow. I'm using the same plush velvet ribbon. It's so beautiful and that pink velvet, it's so pretty and I think this one turned out so delicate and just elegant in Easter decor that I'm in love with it and I think it's so pretty. I hope you guys like this one also. So for the next one I'm going to be doing these beautiful chinoiserie eggs. Pick these eggs up from the Dollar Tree and the three dollar aisle. They do come with feathers on them so I'm just going to remove all of the feathers, the little bit of glue and the actual jute string that's joining them together and guys we'll get started with our eggs. 
Now, if you have white eggs, you can skip this next step because I am going to be painting these out in a white so that way my actual napkins that I'm going to be using that the color is vibrant and pops and does not bleed through. But if you have white foam eggs or white eggs that you'll be using, you can skip this step. I also like to put mines on these skewers. I keep these once I reuse them and reuse them because they're perfect for when you want to do these types of DIYs or crafts and it makes everything so simple and easy for drying. Once I got all of my eggs painted out in a white, then I've set them to side and then we'll be all ready to get started with our napkins. So you could pick any napkins you want. I'm trying to build on my little bit of chinoiserie. So I'm using these. I went ahead and separated the base from the top. That's the part I'll be using. And then I went ahead and just basically cut these into squares. So that way it'll make it so much easier for using them for decoupage. And we're going to get started now. Next thing you're going to do is grab your Mod Podge, your Elmo's glue, your decoupage, whatever is convenient for you. And you're going to apply a little bit of it to your egg now that it's dried. And guys, please don't make too much fuss over it because this is so easy and quick and simple. As you can see, all I'm doing is applying my napkin where I applied my decoupage and then I moved on to the next area and it really is that simple. Don't worry about the excess napkin. You can either overlap it or you can trim it off. Now for this, the only recommendation would be not to use a sponge brush, but to use a soft bristle brush. You can even get these from the Dollar Tree. They're very inexpensive. And guys, that's basically it. Once you're done with your egg, you do want to give it a full coat afterwards. So that way when it dries, it does have a little bit of luster. I wouldn't recommend using a matte Mod Podge, but one that has some luster to it, which is what I use for this little DIY craft. So now that I'm done covering it, I'm just going to go back over the entire egg with a coating of the Mod Podge. And then I'm going to be setting them to the side to dry. And now that they're all dry, guys, these turned out so amazing. They're perfect for adding to your Easter decor or spring decor. I think they look so pretty and vibrant. And that first coat of white paint is really allowing them to pop so the undercolor doesn't bleed through. So I hope you like the way these turned out. I absolutely love these. They look fabulous. So I picked up this bag in the $3 aisle. I like the way they look. They looked a little bit more high end than just a regular bag of eggs. They have this pretty pastel colors with speckles on them and I just removed those beads which I can actually use on another DIY project. I always keep all of the items I don't use and I'm just going to be just removing these so I can just have the eggs and once I got all my eggs together I'm going to go ahead and cut those in half and this is how I will be forming and making my Dollar Tree Easter topiary and guys it's going to look so high end when I'm done. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and get my base. I have this little terracotta pot, and I actually got these when they were two for a dollar back in the day, guys. Kept a lot of them. Painted it white and went back and just add a little bit more color, just to give it a little bit more um, texture and just to make it look a little patinaed in age. Now, I picked up this foam cone, and I'm just gonna add this hot glue to the edge of my planter, and I'm gonna add the cone onto it, and I'm taking all of my 
my eggs that I've previously cut in half and I'm just going to be gluing those on. There's no rhyme, reason, or pattern. Just gave enough room in between them so that way I can go back and add in some of that Dollar Tree floral moss. And I'm going to be going with the more earthy tone because I really want to give this a high-end look and make it look like it came from a, a craft store instead of me making it with the Dollar Tree greenery. And um, yeah, I just love the way it looks. I'm just going to go ahead and sort of separate separate that, that little um, moss out and then I'm going to add it on with some hot glue directly to the actual foam cone. Now guys, I will say you want to sort of thin it out before you start applying it and you just want to go in between the little eggs. I love these eggs because they have this sort of pastel color. They're not too bright and they're not too saturated with pigment which just makes it look a, a little bit more um, high end like, like I said. And as you can see, I'm just pulling this moss over. I'm going to go back and trim it and I absolutely love the way it's looking but I figured I would just add a little bow I didn't want to add anything with too much color like I said I'm trying to go for a more of a high-end look so all I did was take a little bit of jute and I made the cutest little bow and guys I think that this turned out so perfect it looks like something I would purchase at a Hobby Lobby or Kirkland's or something and guys this was all done for five dollars you cannot beat that. Oh, actually, less than $5. I love it. I think it looks amazing. So for my next one, I picked up a couple of these eggs. Um, there was the larger one and then the smaller one. And I am going to be cutting one of these each sizes in half. And we're going to be decoupaging that half. But I'm going to be just painting out everything with a white coat just to make sure I have a good base. And for my eggs that are still just a full egg, I'm going to paint those on both sides in pink and let those dry down and now I'm going to go back to those halves and decoupage them on each side and in the other one I'm going to be using stickers so for the first one as you can see I have them painted out on both sides I am going to go in with this one and just add some Mod Podge but before I do I want to trace out because this one is not the stickers it's just regular craft paper I want to trace out the shape of these egg halves once I have that done, I will go ahead and get these cut out and then I can go ahead and just add my decoupage. You can even use one of those glue sticks if you have that on hand. They'll work perfect for this. And you can get craft paper anywhere. And that's basically all I'm going to be doing. As you can see, I'm adding on my glue now, on my Mod Podge. Just going to be adding on the actual shape that I've already cut out with the craft paper and I'm just going to smooth it down on both sides and that's all there is to this. So simple, quick and easy and it's so much fun. Now I'm going to go to the other two pieces that are the egg halves and this I picked up, I'm not sure if it was from the Hobby Lobby on sale if I got it from the Dollar Tree, I don't remember. But I'm going to go ahead, these are, are just wall creation stickers where you, you can put them on and then just pull them off without any damage to your walls. That's all this is. And I'm just going to add these on. And this is how simple, quick, fast, and easy this actually is. I like the way that some of them are a little bit more saturated than others. Some of them are a little bit more pale. And I actually went in and did this once again to both sides of these egg halves. And now that that's done and I will show you both sides, I think they're so pretty. And I like some of those different colors and variations for this egg. I'm going to go ahead and grab those two eggs that I went ahead and and I um, basically paint it and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the edge and then glue it in place just making sure that I'm getting it in the center of those painted eggs and I will be doing this to each side and guys that is all there is to this DIY I think it turned out amazing and I did put in some little of those game puzzle pieces at the bottom and that way they can stand up independently on their own and I think they're so cute this one you can see how one side is a little bit more pale but I just love the way they turned out and I hope you did too so if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the bell twice when you subscribe so that way you'll know whenever I upload a new video I love you guys so much thank you for always being so amazingly supportive and also commenting below and watching my videos you guys are the best I hope to see you guys in the next video and I want to thank you all for watching